What's up viewers? In this video, we're gonna go through my top five caravan motor mover mistakes. And don't get too excited. This isn't me driving the caravan into a post or a house just to cause some damage. And driving, is that the right term? Maneuvering, maybe. This is about those simple mistakes that everybody makes when using a motor mover, including me. We're gonna go through my top five, some of which I have done. Be sure to stay to the end for some extra bonus tips, some simple things, that'll really help you, certainly if you're new to using a motor mover. And if you're one of those people that doesn't use a motor mover, doesn't see the need for it, stay to the end, I've got a confession to make. Are you ready? Let's jump in. Here's my number one. That was a bit over the top. Right, let's go. We're all set. Motor mover engaged. Let's get the caravan connected to the car. What's going on? Not going anywhere. What? Oh man, I left the handbrake on. I can't believe that. Of course, in reality, with the handbrake on, the caravan would move with the mover. Mover is very, very powerful. Of course, it needs to move a big caravan like this, but it's going to move slower and you're going to hear some strange noises. And of course, it's not good for the brakes in the caravan. If you do it for any prolonged period of time, it's going to damage the brakes. Definitely one to avoid, but of course, it's probably one of the most common mistakes. Here we go with number two. Here's the next mistake. The jockey wheel extended too high. This is more of a problem if you're on grass as the wheel digs in and what happens is that the leg starts to bend because there's no strength. You can see already there that there's stress at the bottom of the upper part of the jockey wheel and it's starting to bend. And with a little bit of resistance on grass, for example, that's just gonna tear the bottom half of the jockey wheel straight off. So the trick there is always have the jockey wheel lower down. It gives it far more strength with the inner section and the outer section together are much stronger. I have seen some tips online about on a twin axle caravan that you should extend it so that it takes the stress off the front wheels and makes turning a twin axle caravan easier. I really wouldn't recommend that. All that's gonna happen is the jockey wheel is gonna break. And here is number three. Sticking with the jockey wheel. The next problem is having the jockey wheel too low, would you believe? It can cause severe damage to the wheel itself and also to the body of the jockey wheel. Let's have a look. You see the grooves in the upper section of the jockey wheel. This is to, if you don't know already, this is to hold the wheel in place to stop it unwinding itself while you're traveling. So it's important for it to be in there when the jockey wheel is stowed, but when you're using your motor mover, it's important for it not to be in. The result is that the wheel can't turn. And if you try to turn the caravan, then it's just gonna drag the wheel across. You can see the wheel can't turn, so it just drags it across and eventually is gonna destroy that jockey wheel. This is around the ideal position. Maximum strength and the wheel is free to move around. You can see it's already started to get wider, it's stretched. Have you had a caravan for many years and thought it's time to get a motor mover? And once you did, you thought to yourself, I wish I'd have done that earlier. Let me know in the comments. Ready for number four? Let's go. Okay, so number four is a little bit silly, but it's possible it could happen, and I'm pretty sure somebody's done this. And this is leaving the remote behind. Okay, that's it. Caravan's ready to go. Let's get this hitched up and on the road. Oh no, where did I leave the remote? I'm pretty sure you had it last. No, I didn't have it last. You had it last. We need to find it. Okay, I get it. It's not very funny, but it's a point. Put it in your pocket. Put it back where it belongs. Don't leave it up there. And finally, number five. I don't get it, it's not working. The isolator's switched on, the remote's on, but nothing happens. See, nothing's happening. This one's most common when you haven't used the caravan for some time, like after the winter storage, and that is a flat battery. Without a full charge battery, the caravan motor mover isn't gonna work. Let's have a look. So the last thing you want when you get to your caravan is a flat battery. It's gonna cause you some problems and potentially shorten the life of your battery. So when you see this, you know it's not gonna be a good day. At this voltage, the caravan mover isn't gonna function. In fact, at this voltage, the battery is dead and possibly cannot be recovered. What are you doing? I need to show the viewers the battery, that it's flat. But they're gonna know you're faking it. I know, but I've gotta fake it. Look, the voltage 13.4, 13.5. It's really good. I'm gonna do this. 
It's a little trick. It's a 1.5 volt battery. I'm going to put the probes on there, measure 1.5 volts, and then press the whole button on there. They'll never know. Look, 1.5 volts. Really? It's important to look after your battery. Let me know in the comments how many of these that you've done. I can tell you I've done three. There you have it, my top five caravan motor mover mistakes. So stay tuned. As I said, we've got a bit of bonus material. It's not much of a bonus, but a couple of little tips that might help you. Here's tip number one. The isolator switch has three positions. Position one is out, position two is in, locked in place and off, and position three is on. You don't need to remove the isolator switch. You can leave it here at all time. So just leave it in the off position when not in use. There's no need to take it out. Here's tip number two. Don't leave the motor mover engaged when the caravan is not in use. For example, in storage, thinking that it's an extra security method. Prolonged engagement of the motor mover could deform the tires. Leave it disengaged. Of course, while you're using the motor mover, having it engaged isn't a problem. And one more thing. There's quite a few people out there that don't have motor movers through choice and don't believe there's a need for them. Uh, able to reverse the caravan onto any pitch. Not a problem. Like the challenge of the reverse. And, and you know what? And that guy was me. That's what I said. For many, many years, I said, I don't need a mover, extra expense. I can get onto most pitches, but of course, then you get to the site. We decide which pitch we want. And I go, maybe not that one. That one's a bit too tight. I don't think I can get it around there. We'll pick a different one. Well, after having a mover fitted, it makes a world of difference. You can get the caravan onto any pitch. Helps in storage helps getting it onto the drive if you're at home. So don't be that guy, have a look at it. It is expensive. It certainly makes life a lot easier. It takes a lot of stress away. Things that you have to consider though are the payload, the weight of the motor mover, and of course the cost. It's very expensive, but in my opinion, it's a very, very great accessory to have on your caravan. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much.